I've always done it my way. You know, I, I there was not like a clear path or any kind of like guidebook or um, instructions on how to do what I wanted to do. I always break the rules. I decided when I was five years old that I wanted to be a fashion designer. I didn't really know how to do it, but I kept talking about it. There was a story in uh, Life magazine. Two young ladies went to Parsons School of Design. I just remembered that my babysitter had a uh, 17 magazine, and in the back there was always an ad for Parsons. And I wrote to Parsons, and I got the registration book. I met Stephen at Parsons. I walked into a drawing class, and I thought, Oh my God, this is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. He had his long hair, kind of very tan, wearing these incredible like jeans and a vintage sweater. We started talking and he said, oh, why don't you come out dancing with us? So that became the beginning of our friendship. We started going out dancing. I, I did styling with Steven because at that point he was just switching over to being a fashion photographer. He would call me and say, oh, can you put together some stuff and bring it over? and let's just play dress up like the way we do with our friends. And so I'd bring suitcases and my stuff, hats and bags and gloves and jewelry, and we would do stories for Franca Sozzani, who at that point was the head of uh, Italian Glamour, which was called Lay Magazine. And then we got kind of like a monthly gig doing Lay Magazine for about a year. I think New York at that point, the economics allowed for people to be artists. And I know some people that lived kind of down in the East Village had apartments that were $55 a month. Consequently, they didn't have to really work. They could just hang out every night. During the punk days, I had some friends that did really cool punk jewelry. And they were selling at the boutique show to all the great rock and roll stores cross country and even some in Europe. And I just thought they were the coolest. And they said, well, why don't you do some clothes and share a booth with us? I did like a little five piece collection and I ended up selling major department stores and boutiques. And the two fashion leaders at that point were Bloomingdale's and Macy's. Um, and I consequently got a New York Times ad and Windows. I was working for this big company, Glenora, and I got called into the office by the man who owned Glenora, who I'd never met before. And he said, why do you have your own New York Times ad? And he was like, threw the paper at me. And I said, I don't know, it just happened. He said, well, it's gotta stop. And I said, it can't stop, I have to ship my orders. He said, well, then you're fired. So I had my $300 paycheck and that's how I started my business. And when I started, you know, my only goal was to dress rock stars and people that went to rock concerts. I would study how bands dressed, how the girlfriends of bands dressed. And, you know, it was really just kind of like what I liked the most. Before I actually worked with any of the supermodels, I knew them socially because of Steven. They would come and hang out um, with us. We would have birthday parties at my apartment, or we'd all go out together, go out to dinners or out to clubs. I have to say Naomi Campbell is probably the best person ever to go shopping with, because she loves shopping. You know, she loves clothes. And one time we were in London and there was this great vintage store called Virginia's. And it was set up like a woman's boudoir from the 20s and clothes hanging everywhere. And we were there hours and she was just trying on all these beautiful chiffon dresses. And then once she made her selection, when we went back to her hotel at, the, at Claridge's, she kind of laid them all out in her room the way Virginia's was. And I mean, it was just, I can't, I'll never forget that visual. I think the most exciting night at the Mud Club was Marion Faithful was performing. And uh, all of a sudden there was a buzz in the air that Anita Pallenberg was in the audience. And I thought, oh my God, I have to meet her. And of course, where do you meet anybody at a club in the bathroom? So I walk in the bathroom and I see this woman that's in the mirror, but all I see is this big fox fur hat and fox chubby. And I don't see her face, but because she's facing the mirror. And I went, Anita? And she turned around and put her hands on her hips and she's like, oh, you must be Anna, Walter's friend. And it was like, oh, she knows who I am. And so we just kind of hit it off then and chatted a little bit. And that's when I first met her. You know, for many years, Stephen would bring a crew up when we were working on a collection. And once I had enough pieces, someone would be designated as the model and then we would throw the clothes on them and we'd start talking about it. And my friend Tim Schaefer would sketch it. So it was always kind of like a party. Through the years that that crew kind of changed, but to this day, I still send every Polaroid up to Stephen. 
and get his comments on it. And my friend Bill Mullen has probably stuck with me the longest and he comes up every season. So it's just fun because it gives you a fresh eye and sometimes gets you unstuck. The one thing I discovered on being creative is that you might not know where you're going with it, but as long as you move forward, you'll get there. Of course, I'm kind of caught up in the past a lot. You know, I'm, a lot of my research is in the past. A lot of it is dreaming about like, what, what would it be to like know a pre-Raphaelite painter or a flapper. Part of what I need to do always is to keep current and to keep it relevant. And I think to be relevant, you have to consider the future. It's fashion, so it's influenced by what's going around, what's, what's in the air. When you go back and look at collections from the past, you can almost tell what year it is. And you can tell like what the politics of the time were. You know, there used to be a theory when the hemlines go up, you know, things are booming. When they go down, it's a, it's a hard time. I think I've always broken the rules. When I was approached by a cosmetics company to do Anna Sui Cosmetics, the cosmetic company was from Japan. I was also approached by a fragrance company, which was German to do fragrances. And I told both of them I would only sign the deal if they would cross distribute. And they were like, this is unorthodox. People don't do this. How can you make this demand? And I said, but it only makes sense. And this way we can sell around the world. And actually that was the beginning of globalization. You know, having my business for 30 some years, I think the thing I'm most proud about is that I still have four or five people on the original staff still with me. I still make 80, 90, 95% of my clothes here in New York. It's something that I really wanted to preserve, something that I believe in. It's been difficult, but it's what I want. I think to make things happen, you really have to believe in what you're doing. Believe in yourself, follow your instinct, and just keep moving forward. Because you might not get there in the beginning, but if you keep pushing, you get there. My life model is live your dream, because I think a dream can carry you further than anything.